Time now for the Oiler Outlook with head coach Corey Allen. Congratulations, coach. A sensational homecoming weekend, and by that I certainly mean the weather, but I also mean dedication ceremony for Strom Field. Uh, I mean a tremendous crowd at Donnell Stadium and a hard-fought win over a much-improved KWC team. Yeah, we packed a lot in in those 48 hours of homecoming, and uh, it, it truly was that. You know, the amount of alumni that were back on campus. I had one of the captains of the 79 team brought me a box of reel-to-reel tapes from the 78 and 79 national championship game. We're going to get those over to the Smithsonian soon, I believe. But <laughs> no, it just, it was an unbelievable weekend to see so many people back and obviously to be able to honor uh, Coach Dick Strom and, and then to, to cap it off with a homecoming win where, you know, where we faced some adversity and, uh, and that grit and toughness that Dick Strom and his other teams had, you know, kind of showed through on uh, Donnell Field Saturday. Well, let's go ahead and go right to that. It was a bit of a crazy game. You controlled almost every relevant stat uh, when you come to it, and in some cases dominated, like when you look at first downs, rushing yardage, total offense, time of possession, but that scoreboard sometimes finds a way to stay pretty tight. Yeah, it's really interesting. If, if, if you're a numbers person, um, when you start looking at that, we possessed the ball seven times on Saturday as an offense and scored on five of those opportunities. Uh, the new clock rules are starting to show up in a bigger and bigger way this year. And when you score on five out of your seven possessions, the average last year was nine, nine possessions uh, per game. And so it has been very interesting to see. And, and what that's done is, is kept a couple games closer uh, than maybe you would think they would be. And, and that margin of error gets a little bit thinner when possessions are limited. Alec Bornhorst, uh, a very blue-collar day, 178 yards passing, 126 rushing with the rushing TD. Obviously, he'd like to have a couple of throws back. I think most quarterbacks do after a game. But overall, he did what you asked of him. Yeah, he did. He, he continues to grow and mature in this offense. He is the unequivocal leader of it and of our football team. Uh, and, and so he did what he was supposed to do when he was supposed to do it. And they threw some, some challenging things at us defensively. Uh, and over the course of time, we responded in the proper manner. Running game became by committee again, but with 251 yards and three rushing touchdowns, you'll certainly take that. Absolutely. And, and by nature of how they were playing. They were playing us in man coverage and overloading the box. And uh, they were daring us to throw the football uh, with the way they lined up. So our answer was to run it. Talk a little bit about the defensive strategy last week. Uh, looked like you guys were trying to contain, keep everything in front, and then rally to the football. The rally of the football certainly happened, uh, and you guys were rattling pads. Jeremiah Jackson had a couple of hits that just jumped off, including one where he dislodged the ball. Adonai Bumbo with the pick, part of that physical. Talk a little bit about the defensive game plan. Yeah, I think it was an outstanding defensive effort, an outstanding plan put together by our defensive coordinator, Tom Rebels, and our staff, Morgan Lloyd, Cody Cole, uh, Joe Basic, those guys do a great job every week. But, you know, you, you have to look at who the other team is. They had a very dynamic quarterback, uh, someone that could beat you with his arm and his feet. He, he was known to do a great job of extending plays uh, and keeping them alive. Number 81, uh, one of their outside receivers, one of the best in the league statistically, uh, one of the best. And so it became very important for us to make sure that, you know, some people talk about that bend but don't break, but it's keep in front of us. And you're absolutely right uh, with your, your intuition there. Let's uh, talk special teams. Saw a lot of good things out there. Bartholomew continues to be rock solid, consistent. Uh, and you guys created some pressure in the punt game as well. Yeah, I think our guys are continuing to grow as, as we mix in, in different people in different spots to, to find that right blend on special teams. And, you know, sometimes a special teams coordinator, they say, uh, I, I wouldn't say gets a scratch, but it's, hey, here's who's healthy, here's who's available. <laughs> now, make a team, hurry up and go. And and they did a really good job, and, and we've been extremely consistent uh, with our field goals and things of that nature. But uh, there was some really big football on display at the end of the game, some complimentary football like we always talk about, yeah. and special teams was a very big part of that. Move on to this week, back on the road to Midland, Michigan this time to take on the Northwood Timberwolves. Uh, dangerous to focus on the fact that they're 1-4 and four, as they've played a pretty tough schedule with Glenville State, Saginaw Valley, Tiffin, and Hillsdale in those losses. And with that, they managed to put a proper throttling on Lake Erie for their one win. Talk a little bit about the Timberwolves. Well, the Timberwolves have a, a first-year head coach and, and Dustin Buer, and he's no stranger to winning football games. He came over from Albion College, where in the last four years he won two conference championships, had an outstanding winning percentage. And so, you know, they brought him in to bring his culture and, and to build the Northwood program. 
Uh, and as you watch them play, um, we pay no attention to what their record is. Uh, this is a good football team. This is a football team that uh, uh, is very capable and, and a football team that believes in what they're doing on both sides of the ball. And you've seen them grow throughout the process. Well, let's talk about their offense first. Appears very balanced, but maybe a little bit more pass-heavy than perhaps historical or previous Northwood teams uh, we would expect to see. But uh, they've also utilized a pair of quarterbacks in all five games at this point. Yeah, look, they're going to continue to find a way to do it their way. You know, I think uh, for those of us old heads around here, the wood bone is what we were very familiar with all the way back to Sleepy Tolly and some of those guys that, you know, were running that at an extremely high level. Um, but the coaching staff that's there now is implementing their ideas and their schemes, uh, and they'll continue to do so. They'll run quite a few backs through that backfield. The quarterbacks will get some carries as well, especially the one. But seen, the senior, a casual goldsmith, is the one they really want to try to get going. Yeah, and, and, and I think that having running back, you know, we, we've done it both ways here. Uh, where we've had, uh, you know, that, that bell cow, that feature back in the form of a Daquan Ford or a Monterey Williams, Dada Silla down the stretch in 2017 or some names in recent memory. There's value in both, you know, to have a stable of backs and be able to keep them fresh is valuable, but also to get a guy really greased up and in the rhythm of the game provides value too. And, and it appears that they have the ability to go either way. None of the receivers exactly jump off the stat page, but they have eight different guys who've caught touchdown passes, which in some ways is a little scarier. Yeah, I mean, I, I think by committee at the wide receiver position is uh, is never necessarily a bad thing. I mean, having guys out there that can catch the football uh, certainly provides a quarterback some comfort. Uh, on defense, Stephen Douglas making a lot of plays out there in the defensive backfield, but then they got that pair of linebackers, Tankara and Wynn, and they make a lot of plays in the offensive backfield. Yeah, Tankara, number zero, is one of the better linebackers that we've seen thus far uh, on film. He's a Cleveland product from Padua Franciscan. Uh, Johnny Harris, one of our captains, mm -hmm. uh, went to Padua Franciscan, and so they are familiar with each other. But uh, they do a really nice job within the scheme, and, uh, and they're explosive kids in the interior. All right, Coach, what's it going to take uh, to make it five wins in a row and keep that road record perfect? We just have to stay in the fight. You know, it, it's it not, not be outcome-based, not worry about the scoreboard, but just stay in the fight, do our job, play to play, moment to moment, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Go Oilers. Go Oilers. This has been Oiler Outlook, a service of the University of Finley Athletics.